problems are tits, ass, pussy, easy. Lady, woman, female, daughter, matriarch, easy. We inspire empathy. We endure suffering, rejection. Revoicing women, women. Art. artists. Now I'm a tower of darkness. As a child, I knew how, beyond the lamp's circuit, lay the shadow of the shadow of this darkness, waiting with the arctic kiss in the well of the staircase, ready to drape the bed with visions no eyelids can vanquish. Now I'm a tower of darkness, whose windows opening inward stare down upon tidal thoughts, and in this responsive bell, hollow by the silence of the ice, the mind swings its clapper, and life resolves into relationships of cadence and dissonance. As a child I knew how, beyond the lamp circuit, lay the shadow hop, the shadow hop, this darkness waiting with an arctic kiss in the well of a star case ready to drape the bed with visions no eyelids can vanquish now i am a tower of darkness those windows opening in world lay down upon tidal thoughts and in this responsive bell all the wet by the silence of the eyes the mind swings its clayper and life resolves into relationships of cadence and dissonance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the woman with child how i am held within a tranquil shell as if i too were close within her womb, I too unfolded as I fold the child, as the tight bud enwraps the pleated leaf, the blossom fold like an unfolded fan, so life enfolds me as I fold my flower, as water lies within a lovely bowl, 
I lie within my life and life again lies folded fast within my living cell. The apple waxes at the blossom's root, and like the moon I mellow to the round, full circle of my being, till I, too, am ripe with living and my fruit is grown. Then break the shell of life, we shall be born, my child and I, together to the sun. How oh, am I ill within a tranquil shell, as if I do wear clothes within a warm eye, to unfold it as I fold the child? As the tight bud and wraps with pleated leaf, the blossom furled like an enfolded fan, and so life enfolds me as I fold my flower. As water lies within a lovely pool, I lie within my life, and life again lies folded fast within my living cell. The apple waxes at the blossom's root and like the moon i mellow to the round full circle of my being till i do till i do till i am ripe with living and my fruit is grown then break the shell of life we shall be born my child and i together to the sun Das Novas Cartas Portuguesas, de Maria Isabel Barreno, Maria Teresa Horta e Maria Velho da Costa. Primeira Carta 1 Pois que toda a literatura é uma longa carta a um interlocutor invisível, presente, possível ou futura paixão que liquidamos, alimentamos ou procuramos. E já foi dito que não interessa tanto o objeto, Apenas pretexto, mas antes a paixão. E eu acrescento que não interessa tanto a paixão, apenas pretexto, mas antes o seu exercício. Não será, portanto, necessário perguntarmos-nos se o que nos junta é paixão comum de exercícios diferentes, o exercício comum de paixões diferentes. Porque só nos perguntaremos, então, qual o modo do nosso exercício, se nostalgia, se vingança. Sim, sem dúvida que nostalgia é também uma forma de vingança e vingança uma forma de nostalgia. Em ambos os casos, procuramos o que não nos faria recuar, o que não nos faria destruir. Mas não deixa a paixão de ser a força e o exercício o seu sentido. Só de nostalgias faremos uma irmandade e um convento, soror Mariana das Cinco Cartas. Só de vinganças faremos um outubro, um maio e novo mês para cobrir o calendário. E de nós, o que faremos? Da Le Nuove Lettere Portuguesi, de Maria Isabel Barreno, Maria Teresa Horta, e Maria Velha da Costa. Poiché tutta la letteratura non è che una lunga lettera a un interlocutore invisibile, presente, possibile o futura passione che liquidiamo, alimentiamo o cerchiamo. 
E già si è detto che non conta tanto l'oggetto, che è un semplice pretesto, quanto la passione. E io aggiungo che non conta tanto la passione, che è un semplice pretesto, quanto il suo esercizio. Non sarà quindi necessario chiederci se ciò che ci unisce è la comune passione di esercizi diversi o l'esercizio comune di passioni diverse. Ci limiteremo a chiederci qual è la forma del nostro esercizio, se è la nostalgia o la vendetta. Sì, senza dubbio, la nostalgia è anche una forma di vendetta e la vendetta una forma di nostalgia. In entrambi i casi cerchiamo qualcosa che ci risparmi la ritirata o ci eviti la distruzione. Ma non per questo la passione smette di essere la forza e l'esercizio ciò che le dà senso. Con la sola nostalgia faremo una sorellanza e un convento su Armariana dalle cinque lettere. Con la sola vendetta faremo un ottobre, un maggio, un nuovo mese con cui coprire il calendario. E di noi stesse cosa faremo? The Night Life is for You by Suzanne Lamis. Here, on the boulevard of Ranamak dreams, each stamped with a doll like face you off recognize as yours, the neon displays its chilly, self possessed light. But the lips on the billboard are raspberry cream. They say, Buy me or be me. You can't tell. You're confused like mad again in this night of mixed blessing, spiked with a ripe curse, that line you fall for every time. You'll drive these streets in a trance after your death, crying, I'm still here. But now you get out and walk. This pale, feverish presence inside your life is you. And those are loud strangers gripping beers. But why die, ever, while stores shut out their bargains, hot CDs, and one can gaze at the bodies who stop dancing now and stand about jaggedly because the doorways of rock clubs pump them into open air? No doubt about it, all this is for you. Some doo-wop tune on the airwave says the night's thousand shifting eyes are on the watch because two of them are yours. Tonight, Mr. Good or Mr. Bad might pluck you from the crowd. There's some place you're supposed to be, some fun you're supposed to have. It's your fate, your fate, and it's open 24-7. La notte per te, di Susan Lamis. Qui, sul boulevard dei sogni sfrenati, ognuno stampato con una faccia di bambola in cui quasi ti riconosci, il neon irradia la sua luce calma e fredda. Ma le labbra dei cartelloni sono una mussa ai lamponi. Dicono comprami o copiami, chissà. Di nuovo confuso pazzo, eccoti in questa notte di croce delizia, quel cocktail maledetto che ti frega ogni volta. Guiderai su queste strade in trance, anche dopo la tua morte, urlando. Sono ancora qui. Ma ora esci, cammini. Questa presenza pallida e febbrile dentro la tua vita sei tu. E quelli sono sconosciuti allegri, avvindiati alla birra. Ma perché mai dovresti morire? Se i negozi strillano i loro affari, i cd alla moda, e puoi guardare i corpi che hanno smesso di ballare e ora traballano incerti perché le porte dei rock club li hanno sbattuti sotto il cielo aperto. Non ci sono dubbi, tutto questo è per te. Qualche canzone di Wop fra le onde radio ti dice che i mille occhi cangianti della notte stanno in guardia. Immagini che due di quelli siano i tuoi. Stasera un mister buono o un mister cattivo potrebbe sfidarti dalla folla. C'è un posto in cui dovresti essere, nel divertimento che ti spetta. È il destino, il tuo destino. Ed è aperto 24 ore su 24. Livia De Stefani, Locicello com'era. Gigli rosa di Locicello, fiorivano per San Michele. 
in due schiere, lungo il viale tagliato a capo nel folto di grigli e cicale. Il viale vestito di reti dal lento migrare dei brividi nel fogliame dei mandorli. Esilissima erba di primo autunno era luce fra il nero dei gambi che sprizzavano in aria quel rosa di profumo di alga. Non si coglievano, non erano gigli da cogliersi. Ceri, dicevano le donne, erano ceri accesi in onore dell'arcangelo armato di spada. Ardevano al tempo di vendemmia e del gioco di lampi a settentrione, sopra l'arco del golfo. Vergini, dicevano, forse erano le vergini. Passato l'arcangelo, il 29, si spegnevano insieme sul nero dei gambi. Poi, sul fare della luna d'ottobre, ingrossavano un baccello di carta velina. Dentro c'era il seme dell'arcangelo, quelle perle come di mare, rotonde e trasparenti, i colori dell'alba. Si coglievano e sgranavano in grembo e con l'ago ed il filo facevano collane. A Friday morning headache, cubes of ginger at the bottom of my teacup. The dark brown patina still stains the tiny cuts in my fingertips. The sky is gray and I'm bleeding. Rub it into an open weekend feels like it has already, but thick, a messier. The shape is no promises. Feel heavy hues and behaviors that accompany depth. Such attachment feel the loss, the lightness of what is no longer demanded. Gently, cloudy landscape between my temples. Dating application Xanax and the true mental breakdown, not in that order. COVID era techno party. Sliced carrots dig deeper. Our emotional, we graze surfaces as hours melted up to midnight. Salt and black pepper chips, a glass cutter that cuts perfect circles, small brown craft paper bags, undisciplined hours serve. If they are written, considered, can one seek? Can one only offer it? How can one The scene of the lack inside that makes us want to be held by them, not by them. Sex talk back on the table, bent over the table with wine-colored tights rolled down to the knees. A connection, if not love. Hold out for an unknown a new plethora of sparks and compromises. 
craving space to craving closeness, all of it preoccupies to be truly alone. One of the legs of the bed has become unscrewed. Maybe it has always been that way. Frequencies of joy and depression are carried on currents of air. Maybe they are held inside cod livers, inside lemons, in the threads on a red scarf, on a tiger mask, in books, in pillows, in lists. Let's leave a carrot absurdly on your shelf. Let's open the bottle of sulfite-free wine that shares your name. Fake fur, collars, kimonos, the freedom to choose which garbage is your own. On which pile is your focus? The work of a lifetime, without which there would be no poetry. I worry. I don't worry about red, violet, brown, grisaille. Five freckles on the back of my left hand, nails that grow. Is anything being censored? How many washes can a sweatshirt withstand? One body, all bodies, beauty, desire, indifference. The way calves feel after a night of drinking wine. Calluses and October. Put it on a shelf on any surface. A robe with rosebuds. A hug from a friend, from a lover. A lover, lovers. Lovers past, lovers to come. Carpe diem. Carpe diem. Have I always been this ghost? Have I always been this Walking ghost? Walking on the yellow land. Walking with no purpose. Walking but on the yellow land. Walking and with no move. purpose. That heavy but piece of meat. time. And piece to move. Of white meat. That heavy piece that of meat. That gets nervous when that space piece too of long white on meat. the same spot. That gets nervous when so that long, stays baby. too long on the same spot. I've been waiting for you. So long, baby. That I've needs been to move on. You. Move. That needs to move on. You gotta move. 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 That you needs gotta to move. move. That From needs nowhere to move. To anywhere. From nowhere to anywhere. 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 Out of, out my, of sight. my sight. From no one. From no one. Anyone. To anyone. 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 Out, out of my sight. sight. Have I always Have been, I always this, been ghost? this ghost? A heavy piece a of heavy thunder, piece white of thunder white meat. A cannibal would enjoy to make his choice. long pig meal. To make his long pig meal. A fantasy in the mirror. A face, a face with, with two holes, holes inside. inside. To let the light, to let the light come in slowly and in and out. out. Come softly by and come forth. Come slowly by and forth. A soul prisoner in my breast. A soul, a soul prisoner in my breast. From white to black ideas. A soul broken. From green from white to, to black gray. ideas. When the backbone from green to flows. gray. When the backbone flows. From pink to black ideas. From pink that blank black my mind. ideas. That swarm that blank my, my mind. Brain. That swarm my brain. That swarm my brain. Head sprinkled. A head from black to white head, from black to white a face hair. troubled, from waves of joy a face to waterfall of tears, from waves of joy to waterfall of tears. Like smoke. The new birds of tobacco fall like on the smoke. carpet when the curtains are closed. The new birds of tobacco fall on the carpet. The cat has a purple when the curtains are closed. He moves into the night. 
I hear him under the my window. window. He mows me on the last night. beam of the dying sun. I hear him. The hen has a purpose. She gently sings her incessant, incessant, incessant quest, incessant quest. I hear him quest, under my window quest. when the last beam of the dying sun. I hear her glow. at the door when I open it at the first glow. The hen the has a purpose. Sun. She gently Two sings her a little quest. hen in the cranny corner yesterday. I had to gather all the hens and I organized a special hen meeting. I told them I to hear never her at the door sisters when I opened open by it at the first floor and I lent them a computer. Two sisters long a little hen in the cranny corner yesterday. In all I had to gather all the hens. There is a free and I organize movie. a special hand movement. There is a free hand movement. I told them on. to never part from their sisters to walk by They give their feet. eggs for nothing. And I lend them the return. Respect and accomplishment. They launched the hashtag Balance. The sun has a purpose. In all by the window he carries, there is a free body. hand movement going When on. When I rest on the sofa, they give and their I eggs from the book from the 19th century. But there came respect and In his hot ways I suddenly slammed. The sun has a purpose. And I forget my memory. By my window, he carries his And I wave my exhausted in the body. empty avenues of the mind. When I rest on the sofa, in an and empty I slowly read the word book from the 19th century. My shadow In his hot slams. ways I suddenly slammed. With no purpose and I forget my memory. at all. And at I the window, the empty avenues of the mind, of stars, peer inside the empty silent world, I carry the seeds of death, my face under a red veil, with no purpose. They think that I come for them to announce the end. The end is the beginning we all long for. The end is the beginning we all long for. The police, the police sirens resound in the empty avenues of town. They are looking for me. Police looking for Jimmy Chas, Jimmy Chas, but he hasn't here. I want to smell him. He smells so good. I want to touch those padded bottoms fitting in the palm of my hands like warm bread. His long neck throbbing blood in his veins. And that little ear waiting on the side. His brow in the space below. His hands, I want to feel them reaching from my heart. And every part of his body. His tummy. His coccyx. His sex so perfect and beautiful. Those long linear thighs, muscles flexing under the skin, his lower back, his feet curling into mine. I can see all of them. He's here, right now with me. That voice, every sound out of his throat goes into my body. I drink him, I drink him, I drink him. I'm so thirsty. I'm so thirsty. I want to taste his mouth. Suck those lips. Suckling tulips. They're so smooth. 
so velvet food I go south and that member I put in my mouth so full and thick you can't all fit but I take care I take care I ask and I invite joy is his joy and mine to share I can't see the light is too bright where is he taking me I don't know where I am I don't want to go back it's all open I don't have any walls, nothing holding me down. I'm floating. One wave after another, the pulse rising and falling. How many times? I don't know my name. I don't know my name. He dropped out of nowhere into my body. I drank him. I drank him. And I drank him. I'm so thirsty. I'm so thirsty. What is it? What is this? I'm touching. My body knows what to do. It knows how to feel. He knows how to touch. He knows where to go. He knows how to be. And so I let it. I let it go. I let it unravel. I let it unfurl. I let it all happen. And it's one after another. They just keep coming. I can't count how many. It's just a dream. I don't want to wake up. I don't want to wake up. Our mother Eve, who tasted of the tree, giving to Adam what she held most dear, was simply good and had no power to see. The aftercoming harm did not appear. The subtle serpent that our sex betrayed before our fall, so sure a plot had laid. That undiscerning ignorance perceived, no guile or craft that was by him intended, for, had she known of what we were bereaved, to his request she had not condescended. But she, poor soul, by cunning was deceived, no hurt therein her harmless heart intended. 
for she alleged God's word that she denies, that she should die but, even as gods, be wise. But truly Adam cannot be excused. Her fault, though great, yet he was most to blame. What weakness offered, strength might have refused. Being lord of all, the greater was his shame. Although the serpent's craft had her abused, God's holy word ought all his actions frame. For he was lord and king of all the earth before poor Eve had either life or breath. Who, being frayed by God's eternal hand, the perfectest man that had ever breathed onto earth, and from God's mouth received that straight command, the breach whereof he knew was present death, Yet having power to rule both sea and land, yet with one apple, one to lose that breath, which God hath breathed in his beauteous face, bringing us all in danger and disgrace. And then to lay the fault on patience's back, that we, poor women, must endure it all, we know right well he did discretion lack, being not persuaded thereunto at all. If Eve did err, it was for knowledge's sake. The fruit being fair persuaded him to fall. No subtle serpent's falsehood did portray him. If he would eat it, who had power to stay him? Not Eve, whose fault was only too much love, which made her give this present to her dear, that what she tasted he likewise might prove, whereby his knowledge might become more clear. He never sought her weakness to reprove, with those sharp words which he of God did hear. Yes, men will boast of knowledge, which he took from Eve's fair hand, as from a learned book. If any evil in her did in her remain, being made of him, he was the ground of all. If one of so many worlds could lay a stain upon our sex, and work so great a fall to wretched man by Satan's subtle train, what will so foul a fall amongst you all? Her weakness did the serpent's words obey, but you in malice God's dear son betray. Whom, if unjustly you condemn to die, her sin was small to what you do commit. All mortal sins that do for vengeance cry are not to be compared unto it. If many worlds would altogether try by all their sins the wrath of God to get, this sin of yours surmounts them all as far as doth the sun another little star. Then let us have and our let liberty have again, our, and, let us have our and liberty challenge, challenge to yourselves no sovereignty. You, you came not in the world without our pain, make that a bar against your cruelty. Your fault being greater, why should you disdain our being your equals, free from tyranny? If one weak woman simply did offend, this sin of yours had no excuse nor end. Dawn, next morning, an agitated nun rang the family home and asked them to come quickly, yes, quickly. Heart wrenched, the four adults scurried back. Oh, what joy for Bridget when that door opened. She was not alone and she was holding on for this final communion. The family sat around the bed in time to witness. Her body was limp, her voice a wisp, but the vulnerability in her eyes could speak volumes. A lifetime of them. And she was grieving, for grieving is the fruit of how deeply we have loved and connected. Her unconditional love was exposed and echoed as she beheld each one in turn. Enormous sobs 
were beginning to emit from the onlookers the ache of parting too huge to contain. Perhaps there was never a mother more left. Bridget turned the rosary beads around in her fingers, clinging, clutching, treasuring their promise of salvation, yet assenting to what was about to come. Father, into thy hands. She tried to pronounce, but earthly words were no longer of her domain. She felt her life force being drawn up to her eyes. And through those eyes, she beheld a bammy light at the foot of the bed, a light that grew dazzling, irresistibly so. And when she gazed into that light, she saw a figure, and it was a figure she knew that inspired her, that excited her. It was her Jesus in his luminous raiment, resurrected in all his glory, holding out his arms to her in the most welcoming of welcomes. Her Lord had come, death was a friend. She wanted to go to him, with him, into that hypnotizing light that limits eternal bliss. Freely, she lifted back the restraining bed covers, looking at her beloved vision anew, and floated out of herself into that light of lightness, a whiff of flowers, whether earthly or heavenly, filled her senses, for her lady was there too, drawing back a transparent blue curtain for Bridget and the Christ to pass through into the resplendent phosphorus of heaven while her earthly family sat on, weeping, wiping, choking, as if the riverbanks of their souls had burst over her empty body. This poem is in the voice of the wife of the world's most famous patriarch. It's called Mrs. God. It's a rough deal, I tell you. Ours is a noisy household. Prayers rattling the walls from noon till night. Lord, give us this. God, give us that. Lord, let us win the war. No, Lord, they won last time. It's our turn. I mean, we can't please everyone. I'm sorry for him, really, but the power's gone to his head. I mean, he thinks he made the world in seven days. Seven days? I was in labour for ten million years. Chips of rock split my belly and came out molten. Lava exploded from my body and turned the universe orange. I was the volcano. I do consist of layers and layers and layers. The world knew it once. Statues to me all over the place, soil full of swollen bellied homage. They were on the right track. He was the house husband. Now I have to clear up after him. I mean, it's a mess, I tell you. House stuffed with dogma and ideas. I don't mind the dust. It's all those beliefs that get me. I'll have to have a word with him when he has a minute about who really wears the trousers.
The angular distance of a celestial object below the horizon, what goes unseen, sung, recalled, her not heralded, or in the inventory of ladies to which one owes an homage not listed, like a poem left out of the leaves of the anthology. Languorous lifetimes in the annals of archives is worth a sudden recollection, rediscovery, but to be tossed out notebook shreds of drafts letters onto the trash heap, forgotten, erased. What matters in all those swirling letters, those late nights penned to some far-off future that will not, cannot raise an unexpected scrap to recall, as if upon a first voyage of discovery, what is she? What in the end is an oubliette? Call her name, their names down into, through the echo chamber, for they lie there in the shadows like echo herself, silenced, only perchance to perhaps one day steal a sliver of voice from an eye coming across the forgotten narcissus to suddenly be lifted from a hole or a rut, to no longer exist like a neutrino passing through matter, passing through us, rise into review, recall, be, become that cosmic ray. Fede Galizia, Florine Stettenheimer, Helen Tor, Herard of Langsburg, Lavina Terlink, Esther Inglis, Katerina van Hemerson, Clara Peter, Marie Gabrielle Capet, Adelaide Labille Guillard, Susanna Valadon, Bronchia Col Pinnell, Lubov Popova, Lotte Latterstein, Teresa Rees. Elizabeth Vignet Lebrun, Rosa Bonheur, Tamara of Lempica, Lavinia Fontana, Yaoi Kusama, Anne Seymour Damber, Margaret MacDonald McIntosh, Hannah Hawk. Agnès Dinesh is not forgotten, but she should be better known. She emerged in the 1960s, spanning conceptual art, land art, performance art, and installation art, which she merged into ecological art, all breaking out into trees, breaking into living as her principal raw material enacted in installations hundreds of years in the making, reclaiming. Some of her projects, one, Rice Tree Burial with Time Capsule, Rural New York, 1969, known as the first instance of public ecological art. Two, Tree Mountain, a living time capsule, 11,000 trees, 400 years, 1992, Finland. Three, A Forest for Australia, 1998, 6,000 trees, all endangered species, installing greens in sheaves, and this is just a start. Do look her up. Agnes Dinesh, spelled D-E-N-E-S. Shortly before she died, unexpectedly, way too early, my friend Martha Reed said more than once, history will forget us. The us she referred to, women. If, as the Goncourt brothers put it, genius is the talent of a dead man, the talent of a dead woman remains just that, talent. A century after she changed American literature, my students have read no Gertrude Stein, but, one of them says earnestly, when I ask them, but if we've read Fitzgerald, and Hemingway, haven't we read Stein? Haven't we, haven't we, haven't we? When I walk in my city, New Orleans, in the landscape of the pandemic, I look down, recording what others don't see and what I'm not supposed to look at, the ghosts of gestures and fears and desires that will outlive us.